Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We'll be looking at Galatians chapter 2, starting at verse 9. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Now, in Galatians chapter 2, starting at verse 9, Paul here writes and he says, And when James, Cephas, meaning Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the, the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Now, when Peter, James, and John heard Paul and Barnabas' words, and they saw that the work that they were doing, they realized that they were preaching and doing was the, it was the work of God what they were the word of God that they were preaching the gospel of grace and the the work that they were doing among uh, among the brethren in in Antioch the church there they realized this is the work of God therefore they gave full approval of Paul's work and rejected the Judaizers' uh, teachings, okay? They, they gave full approval of what Paul and Barnabas were doing, and they rejected the Judaizers, okay? Now it says here, they gave unto us the right hand of fellowship. And, you know, we know that God is not a respecter of persons, and that God sees everyone on the same level. We also think that God is equal and the same across the board with everything, okay? Yet we can't help think that God favors some things more than others or that he has an affinity towards certain things, okay? Now, for example, there are 12 sons of Jacob and there are 12 apostles and there are 12 gates to the new Jerusalem all right it seems like God has a specific purpose for the number 12 and why weren't there 10 apostles and uh, 11 gates to the to the uh, uh, new Jerusalem well there weren't they were all 12. Now, number seven seems to be the number of perfection or the number of completion. There's seven days to a week. There are seven colors in the spectrum. There are seven notes on a piano that make a complete scale. And there were seven articles of furniture in the Old Testament tabernacle. So it seems to be the number of completion, all right? There are also other numbers which seem to have significance in God's word and in his dealings with man and the world, okay? The number three, the number four, number five seems to be the number of grace, okay? You have the number 10 and the number uh, 30, the number 40, right? and the number 50. These are all numbers that God uses in the Word of God. And they seem to have a significance with him that he's using, okay? So also, the right hand seems to have a special significance with God, all right? When Jacob, uh, Israel, uh, placed his right hand on the head of Ephraim instead of Manasseh, because God was going to bless Ephraim in a greater way. In Genesis chapter 48, verses 13 through 20, it, a, Israel put his right hand on Ephraim, okay? And Ephraim became a greater nation than Manassas did. Jesus Christ is seated where? at the right hand of the Father in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20. 
James and John wanted to sit at Jesus' right hand in, in heaven when they got there. In Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 40. One of the places where the mark of the beast will be put is where? On the right hand. Revelation 13, sorry, Revelation 13, verse 16. And when Peter and John were on their way to the synagogue, there met him, uh, there was a lame man at the gate, and he asked for alms, and Peter said, we don't have any silver, and we don't have any gold, but what we do have, we're going to give to you. And what did, what did Peter do? Peter reached down with his, what? Right hand. Took him by the right hand. Okay? And lifted him up. And God healed that man. So, there seems to be a special significance with the right hand. Alright? In the Bible, there seems to be special significances placed upon this right hand. And it was used for friendship, for making agreements. And Paul, by saying that Peter, James, and John gave him and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that it means that Peter and James and John were in complete agreement with, the, with and fellow partners with Paul and Barnabas in the preaching of the gospel of salvation by grace through faith. So when they gave them and shook them by the hand, gave them the right hands of fellowship, it was a sign that they agreed with what Paul and Barnabas were doing in Antioch. Okay. So when this council meeting, meeting in Jerusalem was finished, it ended with the leaders at Jerusalem giving full support to Paul and Barnabas and Titus and to the ministry that they were doing in Antioch. Okay? Now in verse 10, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Now, the remembering of the poor here does not refer to the average poor person in your city or your town. It seems more likely that it refers to the poor Christians who lived in Judea. The land of Judea often suffered from famines, and it seemed like the Christian community in Judea were very low on the list for receiving help or receiving food food. So, it, the, the, the leaders in Jerusalem and also uh, the leaders like Paul and Barnabas in, in other churches, were they were eager to send money and to support these Christians in Judea who were suffering uh, from famine and, and needed food and help and support. And he says here in verse 10, they would that we should remember the poor. And this word, Greek word remember is present active. It's present tense active voice, which means that they were to keep on remembering. Okay? Present tense. Day by day, keep on remembering the poor in Judea. Don't forget your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Okay? Don't think that because you've sent this gift today that uh, a month from now everything's going to be all right because it's not. They need help through this time. And Paul, I also was forward to do. And this Greek word forward is spaudadzo. Spaudadzo. And it, it means to be zealous, to be earnest. And Paul was very zealous and eager to continue to help raise money and support for the Christians in Judea. As we see in Romans, we can turn to Romans chapter 15, verse 26. Paul writes to the Romans and he says, 
for it has pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution to what? To the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. So there was a measure of poverty, a measure of, of, of famine there in the land, and the people needed support and needed help. And it wasn't like today where you had government assistance to help out. It wasn't like that back then. You needed friends or family to help you through these times. On Paul's missionary journeys, he was also helping to raise money or support of these poor Christians. So as Paul journeyed, uh, Paul did three missionary journeys. And on his journeys, as he was planting churches, he encouraged the people in these churches, Corinth, Thessalonica, Ephesus, uh, Rome. He encouraged these people to support in some way the, the, the Christians that lived in Judea to help support them through this time, through this difficult time. So he says here, Paul here says that only they would... That, that we should re after after uh, Peter and James and John gave them the right hand of fellowship and said, "Hey, we think you're doing a tremendous job. Keep going, keep doing it." They said, "Listen, uh, while you're doing your tremendous job, don't forget about don't forget about the poor people here in in Jerusalem in Judea who are, are suffering hardship because it's difficult." Okay. And Paul said, look, you know, I, I know I've, I've already supported them in the past and we are going to continue to, to support them. And everywhere I go, I'm going to help raise money to uh, help support these uh, the, the, the uh, suffering Christians in, in, in Jerusalem. Um, and that's what Paul did. Wherever he went, he promoted uh, helping to support the Christians in Judea and in Jerusalem. Okay. Now, in verses 11 through 15, and we'll start that next lesson, verses 11 through 15, we have Paul's confrontation with Peter. Okay, Paul confronts Peter on a, a certain issue that Peter was guilty of. And that's true. He was guilty of this offense that he did. And it did affect many people in the church at Antioch, and Paul had to deal with this. And we'll get into that next lesson. All right? But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.